Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel, Math Made Easy with PDY. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to prove the cosine rule. The cosine rule is simply a formula that is used to show the relationship between three sides of a triangle and a corresponding interior angle. So let's start with giving a triangle triangle A. B and C, which has corresponding interior angles to the capital A, capital C, and then capital B. And corresponding size to be small c, small a, and then small b. If you take a critical look at triangle ABC, you realize that it is not a right angle triangle. And therefore, this is where cosine rule comes in to show the relationship between the sides of the three sides of the triangle and then the corresponding interior angle. So, what then would be the cosine rule for this triangle? Now, the cosine rule will be quoted as the side small c squared is equal to the side small a squared plus the side small b squared minus 2 times the side a and b, then cos of the angle of capital C. If I want to write the cosine rule connecting the side a to be a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of the angle capital A. Then the last one is the side b squared to be equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos of the angle B. So this is the cosine rule for the triangle drawn here. Now, what then is the proof? To prove the cosine rule, let's assume that I'm proving the cosine rule for, I can pick any of the sides, any of them, but let's start with one of them. So, trying to prove for one, let me introduce a perpendicular height from B to meet the side AC. Now, the perpendicular height, let's take it that it meets it at N. Now, this perpendicular height that I've introduced has partitioned the triangle into two halves. Therefore, they have a common height, which is H here. And now, the side AC has been partitioned into two at n. Therefore, we can label one side of the a n, which is one side, as x. Therefore, automatically getting the distance between n and c will give us b minus x. Because when you put b minus x plus x together, it gives you the full length of a c. Okay. So, from our original triangle, now we can have two right angle triangles and new sides have been introduced. So, let us draw our two new right angle triangles. First right angle triangle, sorry, first right angle triangle is this. which has 
B A N and then angle A is seen or known. The small side C is there. And we've introduced small h, which is a perpendicular height. And then we also have x here. The other right angle triangle is so it also has b and c. We have capital C here small a here and we have the dimension b minus x the right angle is also shown below i mean h okay so in this case we are going to generate some series of equations and please follow carefully the first equation we can obtain from this triangle because we are dealing with cos we have to connect two sides of the triangle and the interior angle which is actually seen which is a and therefore connecting it with the cos ratio then that is going to be the adjacent side of the angle a and that will give me x and then the hypotenuse which is c so that is going to be first equation we can have is cos of capital A must be equal to the adjacent side which is x over small c. Now making as a subject we can have x equal to c cos of A. That can be labeled as equation 1. From the same triangle which is triangle ABN, we can also connect the three sides of the right angle triangle. So connecting the three sides of the right angle triangle, we can use the idea of Pythagoras theorem. So for, from Pythagoras theorem, the hypotenuse squared, which is going to be C squared, should be equal to X squared plus H squared. So we can label that also as equation two. So from triangle A and B, we've generated two equations, equation one and equation two. Now let's come to triangle B and C. Connecting triangle B and C, we can also use Pythagoras theorem to connect the three sides of the right angle triangle. So from triangle B and C, so from triangle B and C, then we can connect it using Pythagoras theorem. That is going to be A squared is equal to H squared plus B minus X all squared. When we expand and simplify, A squared is equal to H squared plus B squared minus 2bx and then plus x squared we are arranging we have a squared equal to b squared plus h squared plus x squared minus 2bx so we can label this as equation number now, going back to our original diagram, you realize that we introduced some new variables to represent some sides that came on board. Therefore, for the original diagram, we don't have these letters H, X in the original diagram, but we introduced it. So at this moment, we are going to do away with all those values or variables we actually introduced by simply substituting for all of them so from equation 3 which we have a squared plus s squared we have an, a first equation we generated or we have an equation we generated early on which is equation number two we can replace a squared plus s squared with equation number two for c squared likewise x the variable x 
from equation one s equal to c cos a. So in other words, substituting substitute equation one and two into equation three. That is going to give us a squared equal to b squared. A squared plus s squared is actually c squared. So plus c squared then minus 2b and x is giving us c cos of capital A. And that is a cosine rule for the first variable A. And that is what is shown here. In other words, if you look at the pattern carefully, you realize that if I'm looking for the side A and I'm writing the cosine for the side A, then it means the two other sides, B and C, must be known. And that B and C repeat, repeats itself here. And the other angle that needs to be known in the triangle should be the corresponding angle of the side that you don't know. And that is the angle A. And that is the angle A. So I believe you are following. Therefore, if I'm trying to write the cosine rule for B squared, then it means that I should know A and C. So it will be A squared plus C squared minus two times the two same sides, which is B, which is A and C. Then cos of the angle of the side you don't know. And therefore that is going to be the angle capital B. So can you look at the same thing and show as that of the side C. So writing the cosine rule for the side C, that's going to be C squared equal to the other two sides that needs to be known as A squared plus B squared minus two times A and B, then cos of the angle of the side you don't know, which is capital C. Hence, this is quite easily done. And that is the cosine rule and the proof for that. I believe you can take your time and then use it to prove the others. Thank you so much for joining the lesson and taking time to go through. In our subsequent lessons to come, we'll be trying to use the full sign rule and then the sign rule to solve some of the questions. Kindly subscribe if you've not. Click on the notification bell so that you notified whenever a new video is posted. Thank you so much and have a lovely